John Lund. Guy Madison. Colleen Townsend. Star on Family Theater. The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents The Fourth Strike, starring Guy Madison and Colleen Townsend. Brief portions are transcribed. John Lund is your host. Every week, Family Theater makes a promise to its listeners, a promise that God will help and protect the home where daily family prayer is practiced, a promise that the family that prays together stays together. I know that's a pretty big statement, but it's true. Family prayer may not bring wealth or security or health or freedom from all worry, but it will unite your family in a bond of love and understanding. It will certainly bring to your family the strength and sense of God's presence, which will help it overcome every difficulty. That's what Family Theater promises you each week, the same promise that was contained long ago in the words of our Lord, Ask, and you shall receive. John Lund speaks again after our family theater play, The Fourth Strike, starring Guy Madison and Colleen Townsend. Well, this is as far as I go, mister. Bloomfield. Pretty little place, isn't it? Looks all right. What's this Bloomfield like? Oh, enough people so as you don't get lonely and not enough to feel crowded. Now, that's the Farmer's Trust and Savings over there and Jeff Norton's drugstore. Frame building here is the Bloomfield Weekly Sentinel. The Weekly? That the only paper in town? Well, it's enough for the size of the place. Say, uh, what's your name, anyway? It's, uh, Graham. Al Graham. Well, good luck to you, Graham. Hope you like it here. Bloomfield, meet Al Graham. Bloomfield, elevation 3,752 feet. Population, 4,025. Watch us grow. Well, Bloomfield, even if nobody seems to be watching, your population has just gone up one. No, Mr. Graham, I'm afraid not. I'd like to put you on, but this is a slack time of year, and I only need one fellow at the fountain. Mr. Norton, I I didn't know jobs were so hard to get. Just the unskilled jobs that anybody can do. And now I could use another pharmacist to spell me, or uh, supposing you were a teacher. The high school is pretty shorthanded. I guarantee I'm no pharmacist, but school teaching. Huh. I used to go over big with the kids. What's that? Oh, sounds like my back window again. If those darn kids... Oh, I was right. How am I expected to keep a window in there? This rock here. It's the second time this month. I warned that Chris Saunders and his gang the next time they made trouble, I... Oh, you know how kids are. I used to be a fast boy with a rock myself. Oh, I realize it's not malicious. But this sort of mischief can't go on either. I suppose I'd better call... Hey, wait a minute. Before you call the cops, Mr. Norton, why don't you let me see what I can do? Where does Saunders and his gang usually hang out? You can generally find them loafing around that vacant lot in the back of Emerson's grocery store. I hope you'll excuse me, Grim, for mentioning this, but this isn't exactly your business. You're absolutely right. But I think I better get me a business if I'm going to find a job. Joey, you think old man Norton will call the cops this time? My dad will never believe it was an accident, Chris. Oh, what do we care about old Norton's window anyhow? Hey, here comes a guy, a big guy. Yeah, I never saw him before. Don't anybody say anything, okay? Hi there, fellas. Nice afternoon, isn't it? I wonder why they call Bloomfield a friendly town. You don't live in Bloomfield. Joey, shut up. Well, I'm glad to know you can talk anyway. I'm looking for Chris Saunders. What do you want him for? A couple of minutes ago, Chris Saunders tossed a rock through the back window of Norton's drugstore. Probably an accident. Yeah. Yeah. I've been measuring out the distance that Saunders had to throw. He must have quite an arm. A pitching arm, I mean. I wanted to meet him. But you fellas are too small, so I... Hey, now, wait a minute, mister. I'm Chris Saunders. I'll bet Mr. Norton sent him. Now, do I look like a cop? 
I just came on my own. How come? Maybe I'm a scout from the New York Yankees. Yeah, yeah, with those clothes. I know. I look like a bum. It took a lot of traveling to get to Bloomfield. Look, uh, you kids ever play any baseball after school? Yeah, sure. We play sometimes in a lot here. Oh, why don't you ever get up a team, a real team? Why? Who'd we play? Well, there must be a lot of other high schools in the county. Well, you could play them, maybe win a championship. <laughs> but we get enough of school. Besides, all we got are women teachers. They never heard of baseball. Well, what if you had a coach? A man coach? No, no. Hey, what are you selling, mister? Not a thing. I might give you something, but I'm not selling. I've learned better. Yeah, well, we have plenty of fun just fooling around, huh, fellas? Okay, okay. Don't mean to butt in. I just hate to see all that talent going to waste, that's all. Well, that kid over there, the one with the long legs, make a good shortstop. Maybe an outfielder if he can throw. And you, Chris. Me? Yeah. Did you think I was kidding about that arm of yours? What about my arm, mister? Call me Al. You know, you may have the makings of a pitcher. Just might. Maybe you couldn't hold up in a real game, but... Well, you know, Bob Feller started out throwing rocks at the wall of a barn. Yeah? It's sure a pity you're not interested in baseball. Hey, Al, what could I do? I got long arms, left-handed. There's only one spot for you, first base. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'd have to see you work out first before I could say any more. Too bad we can't get together, but... I guess if Chris doesn't care for oh, it... Oh, Chris, why not? Yeah, sure, why not? Let's try it, Chris. Okay, you guys, okay. But if I don't like it... Sure, if you don't like it, you can quit any time. How about the school playground tomorrow afternoon? And bring any mitts and bats and balls you have. Hey, okay. you're on, you're on. You're on. Hey, it's during near 5 o'clock. I'm going to miss supper. Yeah, me too. Well, I'll uh, see you tomorrow, Al, huh? Yeah, okay. Oh, pardon me. Sorry I didn't see you before. I've been standing by this billboard for the last ten minutes listening. Well, it's very flattering to draw such a pretty crowd. I didn't mean it quite that way. I simply want to know why this big act about baseball. It wasn't an act. I meant it. You're a stranger here, aren't you? Now, that's right. Uh, we haven't been introduced. I'm Al Graham. And I'm supposed to give you a name in exchange, right? Well, I'm Kathy Saunders. Saunders? In a relation to... Certainly. And being Chris's sister just makes me that much more curious. What do you intend doing with those boys, Mr. Graham? You walking down this way, Kathy? Until I get an answer, Mr. Graham. I'll talk slow. I like boys, Kathy. I like baseball. I like to eat, and my habit of eating requires a job. So I thought maybe the high school could use an athletic instructor, a coach. Well, yes, they could. But why didn't you go to Mr. Jackson and apply for the job the regular way? He's the principal. It'll be faster and sure if I show him a few samples. Uh, say, Kathy, according to that billboard back there, the ladies' auxiliary is giving a dance Saturday night. You're very observant. And what have you plotted out as your next move? Go see Mr. Jackson? Not a chance. Mr. Jackson will come to see me. How about that Saturday night, Kathy? Do you know your great failing? Lack of confidence. And I don't think Mr. Jackson will chase after you. Okay, it's a bet. When I get the job, you go to the dance with me. Why? <laughs> Who told you I couldn't resist a dare? Well, I've seen your corsage. Al, I'm sure you can find out where I live if you really work on it. But if you should want me during the day, call the Sentinel office. The newspaper? You, a reporter? I'm the one and only... Well, what's the matter, Al? You look almost as... Nothing, Kathy. Just surprise. You see, I never cared much for reporters. But I guess I'll learn to like a lot of new things. <laughs> How was that, Al, huh? You're getting a nice break on it, kid. Don't feel bad if you don't strike them all out, though. Oh, yeah, but it burns me up when I can't... Hey. Hey, look who's getting out of that car. It's the principal, old man Jackson. And just in the nick of time, too. Today's Saturday. Well, what do you mean, Al? Hello there, Mr. Graham. Tell you later, Chris. Coming up. What can I do for you, Mr. Jackson? Oh, you know me. I've been hearing things about how you make use of this school playground after hours. What sort of thing? Several of the boys' parents have called my attention to your baseball team. They think it's a splendid thing. A curb to juvenile delinquency, Mr. Graham. Call me Al. We just come out here for a good time, me included. Well, Al, it's something which Bloomfield needs badly. Has needed for some time. Uh, I've been understaffed at the school, you understand. We do need a younger man on the staff. A person who could organize a complete full-time athletic program. Now, I was wondering... If I would take the job? Well, in a word, yes. 
Uh, could you come into my office Monday to arrange such a contract? Uh, naturally, Al, I don't know your plans, but I was told that if I asked you by Saturday, well... Who told you that, Mr. Jackson? <laughs> well, it was uh, Miss Saunders. Her brother plays on your team. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been wondering all day about what I was going to do tonight. Okay, Mr. Jackson, it's a date. Fine. <laughs> Let's sit out here on the veranda and cool off. Kathy, my dancing has gotten out of condition. I expect you're used to better partners. I'm only a little country girl, you know. Me? I like the country. I like the scenery. <laughs> the boys all worship you, Al. Chris thinks you're simply wonderful. Oh, he's a good kid himself. Got a dandy curve. <laughs> that seems to run in the family. Why, Mr. Graham, it's time we went back inside with the ladies' auxiliary. And... Come here. Oh, well, as a school teacher, you're supposed to set an example. I just did, for both of us, Kathy. Maybe I'd like to run in the family, too. Okay, guys. Hey, hold it. Fellows, hold it. we've got a game to play today, your first real game. We've gotten ourselves into the state league, and maybe they're too tough. Nah. Still, there's no use playing a team you know you can beat. Well, they look pretty rugged, Al. Well, maybe they do, but remember, they use the same ball and the same size plate that you do. Okay, let's go. All right, let's go! Uh, 35, 45, 50, $1. Uh, there you go, Mr. Jackson. <laughs> Quite some ball club you've got out there at the high school. Isn't it, though? Al Graham has done wonders with those boys. He certainly turned up a pitcher in that Chris Saunders. <clears throat> Not uh, taking any credit away from Al, but uh, you might say that I really discovered young Saunders. Is that so? Then you must come out tomorrow and watch him pitch. It's the league championship game, you know. Well, I'd sure like to, but uh, business comes first. There won't be any business tomorrow afternoon, Mr. Norton. You might as well close up shop and see a ball game. <laughs> Just a second, fellas. Before you got on the field, I'd like to say a couple of things. One is that you've done a beautiful job this year, and I'm proud of all of you. The other is that it really doesn't matter whether you win or not this afternoon. What do you mean it doesn't matter? Oh, yeah, I know, I know. You want to win. That's great, and I'll be in there praying for you every minute. But remember this. Play hard. Win if you're good enough, sure. But win the right way, fair and square. Because if you can't win that way, you don't win at all, no matter what that scoreboard says. You all know that underneath, but believe me, sometimes it's easy to forget. Okay, let's get out there and win that championship by 25 runs. You better, Al! Hey, let's go, Joey! Hey. Well, Al, good night, and congratulations again. A pennant the first year. I'll bet most new coaches don't do that well. I had a hot team and a first-class inspiration. With the lights still on in the house, Chris must be staying up late. Oh, he, des he deserves a night off. The season's over now. Mm, but not for working girls. Good night, darling. Night, honey. Well, Chris, you're still up. Uh-huh. Yeah, I wasn't sleepy. What have you got there? Oh, why, those are Dad's old baseball scrapbooks. Yeah, I kind of thought it'd be nice to look at them tonight. Mm. He'd have been very proud of you today. Let me see those scrapbooks, Chris. Oh, here's the one I was telling Al about the other day. A picture with a, first, a name that's just the same, Al. You know, Al Martin. Yeah, hey, I remember Dad telling about him. That big game in St. Louis. I was looking for that clipping. Mm, I'm sure it's here someplace. I'd like to... Oh, Kathy, what's wrong with you, anyhow? Oh, Chris. Chris, look at this picture of Al Martin. Okay, what's so di... Hey, that's... Why, that's... Yes, that's our Al. Al Graham. Why, Chris, they're the same man. Oh, for the love of Mike, Al Martin. He's our coach, Kathy. Why, he's been coaching me. I wonder why he never said anything. Why, he... Al Martin. Hey, where are you going? To see if there's still anybody down at the Sentinel. 
For the first time in history of Bloomfield, there's going to be an extra. Kathy. Oh, Al, I've been trying to reach you all morning. Oh, you've seen the extra. Yeah, I had a good look. What's the big idea? Well, well, what do you mean? Smearing me all over the front page like that. Don't you think I had plenty of that without you blowing your top, too? But you are Al Martin, aren't you? Martin Graham? It doesn't matter, does it? I, I don't understand, darling. We're proud of you. All of us are. You... You mean you don't know? Don't know what? Hey, Al! Oh, there he is, Mr. Jackson. Hiya, Chris. Mr. Jackson. You're a difficult man to find on Saturday morning, Al. I can guess why you're looking. I'll wager you can't. We're having a banquet tonight. Uh, Bloomfield is down at the Civic Hall. You are going to be the guest of honor. Tell him about the uh, collection uh, we took uh, up, uh, Mr. Later, Jackson. Later, Chris. Later. <laughs> well, Al? But... Well, this is quite a surprise. I, I didn't expect Bloomfield to act like this. That is, I forgot such a small town might not... I feel very honored, Mr. Jackson. Suppose you come along with me, and we'll make a few arrangements. Glad to. See you later, Kathy. You too, Chris. Sorry I flew off the handle about that story. Oh, he's sure a great guy, huh? Hey, why the funny look, Kath? Chris, if I wanted to find out something about baseball, something special, whom should I ask? And don't say Al. Oh, I guess you could write to the Sporting News or Commissioner Chandler. Mm, that's a good idea, but I don't think I'll write. See you later, Chris. Think I'll walk over to the telegraph office. Al! Al! Huh? Oh, Kathy. What are you doing out here on the parking lot? Waiting for you. Why aren't you in at the banquet with the others? I wanted to talk to you alone, Al, before the banquet. Okay. Shoot, honey. I wondered why you were so upset this morning about the story. A few things you said, and... Well, blame my reporter's curiosity, but I wired Commissioner Chandler's office about you. Do you want to see the answer I got? Don't bother. I know what it says. Al Martin was kicked out of baseball two years ago. Al. Oh, Al, darling, why didn't you tell me yourself? So you could spread that all over town, too? I didn't ask to be Al Martin here. All I wanted to be was Al Graham of Bloomfield. You wouldn't leave me alone, so all right, I'll be Al Martin. But you're not. Well, surely you'll tell them. Why should I tell them? If they want to be chumps enough to make me a hero, that's okay by me. Oh, but someone will know. Someone's bound to remember. Not for a long time, maybe. Not unless you tell them, Kathy, and I don't think you will. I don't think you've got the nerve. The nerve? To break those kids' hearts. To break Chris's heart when he finds out what a great guy I am. No, you won't say a thing, Kathy. And you can bet I won't say anything. Al Martin is going to stay on this gravy train until it cracks up. But, Al, I thought we agreed on honesty. Well, that telegram ought to tell you different. Come on. I don't want to miss any speeches about me. On behalf of the Bloomfield Union High School baseball team, and with the blessing of the faculty and parents... I take pleasure in presenting this gold watch to a great athlete, a great leader, and a great inspiration, Al Martin. Go on, Al. Open it up. There's writing inside. Oh, here, give me. Let me read it to everyone. Hey, folks. <coughs> to Al Martin, win or lose from the gang. It's for you, Al. Thank you, fellas. Everybody. You can't know how much this watch... And Everything means to me. Oh, Kathy, aren't you happy? Oh, Chris, shut up. Yeah, it happens I need a watch, but I can't take this. What's it mean? Why, yeah. This morning you read in the Sun Dome about Al Martin. It was nice stuff, very flattering. Made me sound like quite the guy. Well, that's only half the story. The rest of the story goes like this. I was kicked out of baseball, barred for life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, kicked out for not reporting a bribe from a gambling syndicate. Not exactly a happy ending, is it? That's why I changed my name to Graham, why I eventually came to Bloomfield. I thought I could hide here. Then when you found out who I was, I thought I could keep going and hoped you'd never find out the rest. But facing you folks now, and especially these kids, I see that would be more cheating. You know, in baseball, they give you three strikes and you're out. I had my three, and for a while there, I thought I could get me a fourth, but I guess not. So that's why I better not take this gold watch. Thanks just the same. Oh, oh, hell. Hell. Come in. Al, you're packing. 
Where are you going? Away, I don't know. It's a big world, I hear. But what about me? And Chris and the baseball team. Did you come here to rub it in? You think I want to go? Then why are you going? Why? Because the town won't want a guy like me in it, that's why. Do you think Bloomfield wants... Will you do me a favor, Al? Would you open this window over here? Some fresh air might not hurt. Window? Sure. Hey, what's this? Kathy, look at all these people, the band. Just about everybody in Bloomfield, Al. All 4,025. Sure, sure, but what's a big idea? For a wise guy, you're pretty dumb sometimes, darling. Life isn't always just like baseball, you know. That's a big idea. Bloomfield wants to give you that fourth strike if you'll just stay in the game. How about it, pitcher? Right, coach. This is John Lund again. You know, here's something I think will interest you. During the past two years, more than 225 stars of stage, screen, and radio have appeared on Family Theater. That's quite a record, and one we're proud of. And why do we enjoy being on Family Theater? Because its ideals and objectives seem important to us, and necessary. It brings us a weekly reminder that individuals and families can obtain God's help by praying for it, humbly and sincerely. Many of Family Theater's regular listeners have written to tell us that they feel as we do, that they enjoy the program and approve of its ideals. We're always glad to hear from you and learn what you think of Family Theater, for it'll be a better world for all of us when more and more people realize that the family that prays together stays together. Thank you for being with us, and God bless you. Our grateful thanks to Guy Madison, John Lund, and Colleen Townsend for their appearances, and to Wade Miller for writing our play. Original music was scored and conducted by Max Tear. This production of Family Theatre Incorporated was directed by David Young. Brief portions were transcribed. The supporting cast included Eddie Firestone, Fred Howard, Norman Field, Sam Edwards, Dick Ryan, and Peter Rankin. Next week, our Family Theatre stars will be James Gleason and Nancy Olson in Night Elevator. Your hostess will be Claudette Colbert. This series of the Family Theatre broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Be with us next week at the same time when Claudette Colbert, James Gleason, and Nancy Olson will star on Family Theater. Your announcer, Merrill Ross. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.